Hello, grade 10. In today's lesson, we will plot the graphs for the basic sine and cosine functions. We will do this by working out the table of values for the input variable and the output variable. In this way, we will also be able to form the coordinates that can be mapped on the Cartesian plane. We also look at the domain and range for these functions. To draw the graph of this function, we're going to need a set of axes and we'll need to choose which axis to use for which variable. In other words, we need to decide which axis will represent theta and which will represent sine theta. We know that the ratio depends on the size of the angle. So we'll represent theta on the horizontal axis and sine theta on the vertical axis. In other words, our theta values become the x values for the function and the sine theta values become the y values of the function. So x represents the size of the angle and y represents the sine ratio. So the formula for our function is y equals sine x. Now all we need to do is decide what measurements to use on which axis. We need the angles from 0 to 360 degrees on the x-axis. We saw last time that the sine values have a maximum of 1 and a minimum of minus 1. So all we need on the y-axis is the numbers minus 1, 0 and 1. But there are so many values to plot between these points. So let's spread these out a bit and also mark 0, 0,5 here and negative 0, 0,5 here. Now to sketch the graph, we can plot our points from our table of values. Have a look at the plotted points. This point at y equal to 1 is a maximum point and this point at negative 1 is a minimum point. We also see that for x equal to 0 degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees, sine x is equal to naught. Do you think you can sketch the graph using these points only? We can't assume that there are straight lines between the plotted points. We need to know more about the points that are in between the plotted points. Let's look at the unit circle again to help us here. Do you remember that in this circle, r is 1, and so sine theta has the same value as the y-coordinate of the end point of the line segment? So to see what is happening to sine theta as theta increases, we can look at the height of y at each point. Watch what happens to the value of sine theta, which is shown by the height of y as theta increases from 0 to 360 degrees. For theta changing from 0 to 90 degrees, sine theta increases from 0 to 1. Then it decreases from 1 down to 0 for x between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. It continues to decrease from 0 to negative 1 as we move from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. Then it increases again from negative 1 to 0 as theta changes from 270 degrees to 360 degrees. This pattern helps us decide how to join the points that we have plotted on the graph of the sine function. From it, we can see that the gradual change in the height of y and therefore of sine theta will show as a smooth curve on our graph. Now, watch what happens on the sine graph as the line segment rotates around the unit circle. Each height on the unit circle is plotted as the y value on the sine graph. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
When the line segment has completed its rotation around the unit circle, we can see that all the sine theta values for x from 0 to 360 degrees have been plotted. What we end up with here is the graph of the function y equals sine x. As with the graphs of any function, we can read any point of this graph now. We can find the angle sizes for different values of sine theta. We can also show that there is more than one angle with the same value for sine theta. Now that we've looked at the sine function, let's move on to the cosine function. If you remember, we said in the first lesson that if we have any line segment on the Cartesian plane, the cosine of the angle created with a positive x-axis is the ratio of the x-value to the r-value. We've seen how sine theta behaves on the unit circle. Now let's have a look at cosine theta. As the line segment rotates around the circle, you can see again how the position of its end point changes. For each value of theta, we find the value of cosine theta. Because we are working in the unit circle, we can use r equals to 1. So cosine theta will be equal to x. In other words, cosine theta is the same as the x value of the end point of the line. This x value at each point shows how far the point is from the y axis. Let's see what values we get for cosine theta if we rotate the line around the circle. Just as we did with sine theta, we can make a table of values for angle theta and for the value of cos theta. So at 0 degrees, cosine theta, or the x value, is 1. I'm going to leave that to you to check on your calculator. If we rotate the line to 30 degrees, cosine theta, or the x value is 0, 0,866. Again, you could check that on your calculator. Let's see what cos theta is at 60 degrees. At 60 degrees, we can see from the unit circle that cos theta is 0, 0,5. Now, we want to set up a function that shows how cos theta changes as the angle theta changes. I've already worked out three of these values. I'm going to leave you to work out the missing y values in this table. Remember that we need to find enough values to be able to see what the graph looks like. Once we have enough points in the table, we are ready to plot the graph for the two variables, theta and cos theta. Again, we need to put the theta values on the x-axis. There are independent values and go from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Then we need to put values for cos theta onto the y-axis. From the values that we have in the table, we can see that we'll need to go up to 1 and down to negative 1 again. Let's mark 0, 0,5 and negative 0, 0,5 as well. From the table of values, we can see that cosine theta will reach a maximum of 1 at theta equal to 0 degrees and again at 360 degrees. Cosine theta has a minimum of negative 1 where theta is equal to 180 degrees. But when theta is 90 and theta is 270 degrees, cosine theta is 0. So far, we've plotted the maximum points, the minimum points, and the x-intercepts. You'll see that we don't yet have enough points to see the shape of the graph. Remember, we can't assume that we can join these points with a straight line. So let's plot the other points from the table as well. Here they are. 30 degrees and 0, 0,866. 60 and 0, 0,5. 120 and negative 0, 0,5.
150 and negative 0 0.866. At 210, it's also negative 0 0.866. At 240, it's negative 0 0.5. And at 300, it's positive 0 0.5. And at 330, it's positive 0, 0,866. Now, the shape of the graph is very clear. If we were to plot even more points in between these points, you'll see that the graph curves like this. To check that we have drawn the cosine graph correctly, we can use the unit circle. In the unit circle, cosine theta has the same value as the x-coordinate of the line segment. The x-coordinate of any point shows how far it is from the y-axis. As the angle changes, watch how the x-values and the distance of x from the y-axis change. As theta rotates from 0 through to 90 degrees, x or cosine theta decreases from 1 down to 0. Then, between 90 and 180 degrees, x, or cosine theta, continues decreasing down to negative 1. The negative sign tells us the point is left of the y-axis. From 180 degrees to 270 degrees, cosine theta increases again from negative 1 up to 0. And finally, from 270 degrees to 360 degrees, cosine theta increases from 0 up to 1. So, we've used two ways to draw the cosine graph. We used our table of values and we used the changes in the x values of the unit circle. We can also confirm that these plotted points are correct using a calculator, but I'll leave that to you. The cosine graph has the degrees on the x-axis and cosine of theta on the y-axis. What we've done is use the x-axis to show the change in the angle theta. So theta has become the x variable. The y variable becomes cosine of x. Cosine theta has become cosine x. So our functions formula can be defined as y equals cosine x. Don't get this way of using x and y confused with the distances x, y, and r that you used in the unit circle. Now, let's look at the graphs of our two functions together. Here is the graph of y equals sine x. And here is the graph of y equals cosine x. If you look at these graphs, you should be able to see some ways in which they are the same and some ways in which they are different from each other. If you look carefully, you'll see that they both reach a maximum of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. So they have the same range from negative 1 to positive 1. Of course they don't reach maximums and minimums at the same x values. For example, at 0 degrees, the cosine graph has a maximum value, but the sine graph has an x-intercept. At 90 degrees, the sine graph has a maximum value, but the cosine graph cuts the x-axis. We can also say that the two graphs have the same amplitude or height. They both reach a height or amplitude of 1 above the x-axis. They also reach the same distance of 1 below the x-axis. Both graphs also have the same shape. They curve in the same way, except that the sine graph starts with a y value of 0 and the cosine graph starts with a y value of 1. If we extend both these graphs to go further than 360 degrees this way, and to continue into negative degrees on the left of the x-axis, you can see that they have a repeating wave pattern. Each full repeat of the wave spreads over 360 degrees. So we say that the sine graph and the cosine graph both have a period of 360 degrees. 
one last important thing about the sine function and the cosine function. We define these functions as y equals cosine x and y equals sine x. But it's possible to have other sine and cosine functions. For example, the function y equals 2 cosine x or the function y equals negative sine x minus 3. There's a whole family of sine functions and we can represent them with a general formula y equals a sine x plus q. We can consider y equals sine x as the parent function of this family. So the parent graph has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0. Similarly, there's a whole family of cosine functions and we can represent them with the general formula y equals a cosine x plus q. We can consider y equals cosine x as the parent function of this family. So this parent graph also has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0. Now you also know where the sine and cosine graphs get their shapes from. Remember to keep practicing your textbook exercises and don't forget to watch the task video. You'll also be able to find more information on the topic of trigonometric functions at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Guess I'll be signing off for now. Check you later, my cosines.